Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis, a podcast dedicated to the Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell case. Join us as we seek the truth and travel the long road to justice. What's going on, everybody? So we were just looking. It's been a month since we've done a podcast. Yeah, I didn't think it'd been that long, but it has. Man, time flies. Uh, You've been out west again. You were in... Were you in Nevada or New Mexico? I mean, not Nevada. Uh. <laughs> I was not in Nevada. I was in uh, New Mexico and Arizona, That's just different right. times. Yeah. yeah. At Thanksgiving, did you have a nice? I did. Nice Thanksgiving. I did. That's good. Yep. Good. And then I quarantined when I got back just to be safe. So I, I know I've I've yeah. seen you twice in a month. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Yep. Um. So yeah, we're just getting ready for Christmas around here. School's out, Ugh. what, tomorrow? School's always out when they're doing it online. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, it's, it's tough. It's, I've been with my kids for nine months solid. Yeah. I love them, but whew, I get tired. Yeah, it's it's a little hectic, <laughs> a little crazy. A little bit crazy. Um, So there's been, you know, we go periods where there's nothing, and then all of a sudden there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. So not much happened in the month since we did the last one but then this week we've had some big news with this recording of rob wood and allegations and all that mess and we're going to get into that in a little while but what do we have coming up what's the next court dates uh january 6th unless because i know wood requested um what do you say a um well what word am i hunting for the continuance no for the um the stuff about him, he requested it be heard like quick. Oh yeah, like a expedited. Yeah, expedited. That was a word I was on. It was it was bouncing around in there. That's um, okay. I caught it for you. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, unless something comes up, I wouldn't think it would come up between before the sixth of January. But Never I don't know. know. Yeah. So yeah, the sixth is the first one. Um, and that's both Lori and Chad. Yeah, yeah. Will they be together? I don't know. Will they both show up? No, I think they have to, right? Uh, they, yeah, guess, they have to come yeah. for that one. So, uh, so this might be the first time we actually see them in the courtroom together. Yep. Because um, she waived her right to appear in those other ones. So That's right. So it's been a, a while since we've seen her. I'm curious to see how much the gray has grown out. Yeah. It's totally a woman thing, but I take yeah. pleasure in the little things. Oh, I know, right? Like seeing her Botox wear off and, <laughs> yeah. and the gray come out. Yeah. Um, so she'll have that mask on though. Oh, I know. That's so irritating. I'll be glad when COVID's over just so we can see all of Lori. Exactly. Um, so there were some filings about the, uh, dismissal and Pryor is still calling her Vallow. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't care what nobody says. I think they're turning on each other. They're already turned. Yeah. Because... He also mentioned in the change of venue filing that Lori tried, he brought up the fact that Lori tried to justify the right to harm Joseph Ryan. Yeah. Okay. We all know. I I don't, I can't tolerate prior at all. Um, (laughs) But I mean, if you think about it, like his job is to get his client off. Like that's his job. Yeah. To get his client off. So whatever, even, uh, Whatever Chad says, I think he's going to kind of do what, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, it's every man for himself, really, at this point between yeah. Chad and Lori. Um, yep. And because I went back and watched a little bit of when he was questioning Melanie Gibb. And he, he sort of, it was the point where he says to her, Why did you just look at the prosecutor? And Melanie Gibb's like, I was just looking around. And I just had to turn it off because it was so condescending. Yeah. And, um, no, I don't like Pryor's demeanor. But like you say, I mean, out of the two, he seems to be the one filing more motions and being a little more proactive. Yeah. And I was, I was waiting because when means, normally means like does all this crazy stuff and it ends up being nothing. And I was waiting because normally Pryor does all the filings. Mm-hmm. And but this time it was like okay, Means did the filing, and then Pryor jumped in on the whole uh, 
Rob Wood thing and all right. that stuff. So, but I think even if even if they've separated at this point, um, there are some things that Pryor and Means can do, sort of in tandem, which would be these kind of filings. Yeah, uh, yep. that's sort of. Um, it doesn't really matter if they turned on each other. He also accused Rob Wood of not releasing Tammy Daybell's autopsy, which we were just discussing before we started this. Yeah. Uh, it's been over a year since they did her autopsy. Yeah. She was uh, exhumed December 11th. And if you remember at the time, they said it would take about a year. Yep. To get those results back. And we're past a year. And we know, I guess it was maybe late summer that they passed that up to the attorney general. Yeah. And we've heard nothing. Yeah, and I mean we were we were talking about it. If they haven't charged them with anything, they don't have to release that. Right? I mean, right? Like I don't think that they have to release like a cause of death, but we always go back to what Nate told Nate Eaton from East Idaho told Nancy Grace, which is he's heard even without a cause of death, they may have enough to charge them just on digital evidence. Yeah. I just don't understand why we haven't heard anything about it. I mean, I know they don't have a timetable for murder charges, but it's been a year. Yeah. And I'm sure they have a reason, but I think about her family. Um, they're just waiting. Yeah. And it's been a year. They may know more than we do, but, you know, I think I saw a statement a few months ago that sort of insinuated they, they didn't know anything yet, you yeah. know, at, at that point. Yeah. So it's just been a long haul. And with them moving things up, um, I just don't know. I kind of feel like maybe since all this stuff with Rob Woods come out, you know, is it a good time for them to drop conspiracy to commit murder charges, which he mentions on that rec or supposedly mentioned on that recording we'll get to that yeah but uh now's a good time guys give us all a christmas <laughs> gift yeah yeah so how long have they been in jail so chad's been in there about six months and lori's been in there about 10 months mm -hmm. that's a long time it is a long time and it's but in in the grand scheme of the rest of their life it's not a long time but we always say this, I wonder what they're doing. I wonder how they're coping. I think at some point you maybe just have to give in and become an inmate. Yeah. You, you know, it's kind of a survival thing. The last we heard was that Chad mostly kept to himself. Yeah. And that she does the same. She's still reading his books and. But we remember we did sort of hear from that. We did hear from that lady that was in there with her that said that she did kind of, did she say that she kind of strutted around a little bit? Uh, she was very eager to, see the news story yeah after a hearing or something yeah but uh, you know you have to wonder at this point lori's been in almost a year um what's her true state of mind yep that's interesting stuff so we've got a big uh three hour documentary coming up sunday yeah i think this is going to be uh good stuff good stuff to watch there's i think um like Kay and Larry's on there and they followed them around like I don't forget how many months it was a year okay so a year and if you remember this is like Means tried to say oh they're trying to secretly record something in the courtroom and they were like oh, oh yeah, no. yeah I remember that you know they were doing this documentary so yeah um, Kay was like we took the mics off in the exactly. car exactly about yeah yeah uh so that's going to be on the uh investigative I think discovery channel yeah. Sunday night. It starts at 7 p.m. It's a three hour special and it's called Doomsday the Missing Children. Yeah. And I saw Adam Cox in the commercial. I saw the same thing. Lori's brother. Yep. Who we haven't heard him really say anything. So, no. And this will be interesting. And the little clip that they played was him saying that he noticed she was becoming obsessed with end of the world, doomsday stuff. Yeah. Um, so. There, you know, I'm going to be watching. I've already told you, like, yeah, we'll clear your evening. Yeah. We'll put on some, some popcorn and yeah. we'll sit here. You know, I, I think the thing is, um, so they had to have been in the process of filming this when they found the bodies. Yeah, um, I saw a couple of shots um, where they were pretty emotional. Yeah. So um, it's it'll be a gut wrencher for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, a heart heart tugs um so some other stuff you saw 
Um, so they gave an interview to with Arizona family. Yeah, Kay and Larry did, I believe, yesterday. I, I tweeted it out, put it on Facebook. And um, essentially they were saying that they're just glad they now know what happened to the kids or where they were. Um, yeah, they talked like this time last year. They didn't, you know, that was kind of the whole. Right. And, yeah. and, and they they were talking about how they, they were holding out hope that they were just off the grid somewhere. Yeah. Um, because I don't even think a year ago, Kay and Larry could have ever predicted that Lori would have allowed anything to happen to those kids as crazy as they thought she was. Yeah. Um, and I think we always went back and forth before the kids were found. It's one month I would think, yeah, they're totally off the grid somewhere. And then the next minute I would think, oh, you know, it's just, it's been too long with nothing. Yeah. Um, it was because we started following this case a year ago. Yeah. Literally, it was a year ago. I'd found the case first and kind of read up on it. And I told you, because you, you never followed trials. Yeah. Ever. And yep. I told you, I said, this is a good one to watch. This is interesting. There's a lot of pieces to it. And here we are a year later. Yeah. Doing a podcast and devoted a lot of this year to research in this case. Most definitely. Um, if, if you want to kind of like weigh all the things I've done all year, I'd say this. <laughs> yeah. You know, being a mom, being a daughter, granddaughter, whatever. And then this like uh, yeah. research in this case. Is yeah. Like and then five. we took it. We took it on the road to the beach. Yeah. All that That's stuff. right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's been a crazy year with a lot of twists and turns. And um, so now we just wait for the. The slow wheels to keep. Turning. I know, right? Like I'm ready to get in and start, you know, like trial and it's and all gonna that be stuff. a while. I, yeah. It's not even gonna happen in June. Yeah, there's no way. I don't think um, so either. Because if you remember, we're in the time frame. Even though they they came back uh, in Arizona for Charles's death, they said, "Oh, we'll have it probably by the end of the year." Well, here we are, and then they sort of revised that and said, "No, we didn't mean the end of the year." <laughs> yeah, but, we didn't mean that. Yeah. But, I mean, we, we, there's so much to come. Yeah. There's so many charges to come. There's so much information to come out. Um, so we're just getting started with this case. It's just now we hit the delays and the mudslinging and all that. But, yeah. But the one thing that, that stuck out to me was in the interview, uh, I don't think Kay and Larry mentioned it themselves, but it was, it was said that they still have not released J.J. and Tylee's bodies to the family. Yeah, like that. I that's tough. That's hard. Those that's, poor yeah. babies have not been laid to rest. Yeah, and yeah. you have to wonder why. Yeah, I know. Like, I don't. I don't know. I've been back and forth. I think part of me thinks they just don't have a cause of death uh, for one or the other, or are they comparing stuff to other deceased individuals? Their autopsies to see if there's a common thread. I don't, th yeah, they're not don't holding these bodies just to hold them. There's a reason. Yeah. And I know they don't want to have to uh, exhume a body or, you know what I mean? So I don't know if yeah. that has anything to do with it. Uh, that, oh wait, we found something. Oh, now we need to check. You know what I mean? So, yeah. You never know, but I don't know. I know with Tylee, uh, just the condition that her remains were found, it's, it's probably going to be very hard to find a cause of death for her. Although if you watch a lot of the investigative shows, they, they, they can take skeletal remains sometimes and still find a cause of death. Yeah. Um, so who knows why, but I just, I don't know. I feel like those poor babies need to be put to rest. Yeah. Um, but, you know, at least they know it's not a, um, they know what happened now. Right. So they get some kind of closure. I think so. I think um, with, with Chad and Lori, I, I know we all sort of felt when they found the bodies and then they arrested Chad. Um, for me, it was sort of like, okay, this is sort of switching over to the next phase of this case. Yeah. Um, so what all did uh, Kay and Larry say in their interview? Um, you, you know, they talked about um, uh, in their last two interviews, um, it was like dredging up all that hurt back up. Yeah. Um, that it was, you know, very hard. It wiped them out. I mean, honestly, they're older, like they're grandparents. Right. Um, and I know like they've been on an emotional roller coaster for a year. Yeah. Um, so not only that, but they lost Charles. 
yeah the same year so yeah. so it's been a double whammy for both of them um, yeah to lose charles and then lose jj entirely yeah and you throw in tons of other things oh yeah um just being in the public eye having to deal with constant um uh attacks or mm -hmm. uh living under a microscope yeah and then they had those hurricanes come through, like one right after the other. They had two. Yeah. That so, directly impacted them. They've had a horrible year. Yeah. Um, so I think she said it was two days of staying home and crying and not talking to anyone. And I totally get it. Dude. I bet. Like, I bet. Because it's to lose a child in an accident is just bad enough, I'm sure. Yeah. But to know that that child was consciously taken. Um, that a healthy child was taken out of this world for, for reasons of evil. Um, I don't know how you ever resolve that in your life. I think that you probably get to a point to where you just, you learn to deal. And Kay had said in the interview that they do have other grandkids uh, that have been a big help yeah. that, have, that have helped them sort of move on a bit. And then she talked about how um, she does have a, a, a little bit of peace in knowing that, that Tylee and JJ are together in heaven. Yep. And, um, but I think it's, you talk about the public eye and I, I've seen it covering other cases and then getting to know some of Travis Alexander's family members throughout that, that trial and, and afterwards. Um, it's hard enough to grieve the loss in such a brutal way on a private scale, much less, you know, with, with the Jody Arias, Travis Alexander case, that was, look, a lot like this it was global yeah and there was so much interest and some people online weren't very nice to the families and we've seen that in this case oh yeah so on top of dealing with um just the grief that's very raw and real you're dealing with other dramas that strangers create yeah and i saw it happen in other cases and i've seen it with this um yeah the thing that like hit me yesterday when all this mudslinging going back and forth uh, was, okay, Mark means the stuff you brought up, like your client is guilty. Yeah. Like she's guilty. Uh -huh. And the stuff you're bringing up about um, Rob Woods, I mean, there's people dead. Like you have two kids that were murdered and you're bringing up oh he you know he said this or that i mean i'm like come on dude yeah um so so the other thing that we since we um since we were last on is they released a bunch of pictures of joseph ryan's apartment when they found his body yeah that was uh that whole thing was like crazy yeah um, cause I, I don't, I mean, I've been confused about the status of that because initially months ago they said that it was a natural death. We're not reopening it. And then we heard they were going to reopen it and then we heard they weren't. And now we've heard that they've reopened it again. Um, but so we're just going to talk about a few of the pictures that we saw. I'll put a link to these on Twitter and Facebook for you guys. We're going to get that YouTube channel back up and running. I'm going to be honest. Like the reason we haven't is I've just been busy. Fruit Loop's been busy and yeah. we, I haven't had time to really do much. Um, but so there was a picture of some shelves and the one thing that stuck out to me was every single picture on that shelf was Tylee. Yep. Him with Tylee or her by herself. Yeah. We didn't see any of that in Rexburg. <laughs> No. Um, you know, it's, I think the last time I saw pictures of the kids on a shelf was pictures from when she was married to Charles Yeah, and it was in their house. Yeah. Um, we still don't really, I can't figure out how long he had lived in Arizona before he died, but we, you said something about the lawyer. Yeah. He talked about, remember he talked about, um, Joe lived with him for a while and then lived with his brother for a while. Yeah. And so eventually got his own place. Yeah. We just don't know how long he was there. Yeah. And I think, I mean, if you look at the apartment, it, it, it looks like a bachelor pad. There's, there's nothing in there that's homey, homely or homey. I don't know. Is it homely or homey? Homey. 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 You're my homie. Uh, I was going to say like, 
uh, <laughs> Homie yeah, the Clown. Homie. It was not, it was, yeah, typical. There wasn't a lot of furniture. No, there was like bare, bare minimum of what you need yeah. to live. But those pictures for me spoke volumes because you just have this kind of barren apartment. And then yeah. you got like the whole shelf was just covered with Tylee. Yeah. I won't say covered, but there were, there were like five, six pictures. Um, and it just goes back to that, the podcast that we did months ago where we went through all those custody papers and yeah. she made him out to be a monster. And now we know he was the one that, that would have definitely, um, we wouldn't be in the situation we're in now if Joe had gotten custody. But he moved there to be with her. And I don't think he's, from what we know, I don't think he saw her. Yeah. She said she hadn't seen him in two years is what she told police. Yeah, that's what Lori said, so. Yeah, and, and what about the doors? I just thought it was weird that there were two deadbolts. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've lived in an apartment complex. You've lived in an apartment complex. I never added a deadbolt to my door. No. I have friends that live in apartment complexes now. They don't have a second deadbolt. I don't know. My first apartment, I probably should have. Uh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Dude, I was straight up yeah, in yeah. the worst. That's, yeah, yeah, I didn't know when I got yeah. it. But <laughs> but to put two on there, I mean, at this point, obviously, he's been, it was after he had been tased by Alex Cox. Yeah. So he might have had some, you know, justifiable fear. But, yeah, I mean. But it's been a while since that happened. Tylee was little when that happened yeah um she, i think she was five so you're looking at years have passed i think and he still kind of makes you wonder was there some threats that maybe happened before he died i don't know or maybe yeah. you know i think i think being tased is so traumatic in that way that that it could have just created some paranoia yeah um other stuff in there was like um exercise stuff so he had a bike like a bike he could ride outside Exercise equipment, a uh, physio ball, um, the big, uh, big ball. Um, there was like a blood pressure cuff. Yeah. Um, so it looked like he was taking care of himself or trying to. Yeah. Um, and I think, I believe Annie had said, his sister Annie Cushing had said at one point that maybe he had gained some weight. If you looked at the driver's license picture, yeah. Um, he definitely did look like he had gained weight compared to that, uh, the passport picture, but he, he was having an issue with his drinking and depression, which are kind of like, it's like gasoline and fire yep. for weight gain. And he had every right to be depressed. Yeah. I mean, this guy went into major debt. He got the DUIs, which made it hard for him, I think, to get hired again. And then he couldn't see his daughter. Exactly. And not only that, he had been made out to be a pedophile. Yep. Um, so much stress on that poor guy. Um, yeah. So it also looked like he was cooking or had been cooking. There was like spaghetti sauce or something on the yeah. on the stove. Mm -hmm. um, but just very basic stuff in there. Not yeah. very lived in. No, he, he had a lot of boxes on the floor for printers and instructions were laid out. Um, did you notice the lady sunglasses on that counter? Yeah, that was... Uh, that was um, interesting. Yeah, I was looking for the word. But we do know that after he died, Lori went in that apartment. Yeah, all that is like really weird. Yeah, it is very weird. She hasn't talked to him in two years, but she was the next of kin. So technically, I guess she would have been responsible for that. But being the next of kin, I'm curious, and maybe we should look this up and see, was there any kind of a filing by her for probate? Yeah, we haven't looked that up. But that'd yeah, be something. It just hit me. Yeah. Um, we, we know that he was supposed to have had a life insurance policy that was for Tylee. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot that's going to come out, Yeah, you know, probably in court about, yeah. I don't know if that would come out, but I'm, I'm curious to know, did she file probate on his behalf? Did he have any stocks or bonds or savings that she got? Yeah. Um, um, I think Annie was on Dr. Oz or something. Yeah, uh, I didn't watch that, but... She did, you know, mention some things um, that were odd that stuck out to her um, about her having the files. Because mm -hmm. she said that Lori had um, files and photo albums. Uh, um, and uh, Which the photo albums probably ended up in the storage shed in Rexburg. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, but she had that, and uh, she just mentioned on there that it was odd as to what the way Lori described to her the how Joe was. It was like she had seen him, so she thought that was really odd. Hmm. So that was that was some interesting stuff. But I think he asked her, Doctor Oz asked her about um, life insurance, or whatever, and she still didn't know. So yeah. Yep. Um, so there were I saw a couple of books. One was Living Sober. Uh, that was a book that was on the floor in one of the pictures, and then there was another book, The Power of Now: A Guide to Spiritual Enlightenment. So it seems like with the health kick just be, th- what few things he had in there that wasn't furniture was health related and then living sober you know it seems like maybe he was trying to get things together yeah and and probably in his mind would have a, a a relationship with tylee at some point and who knows what happened but i didn't know he was a veteran i didn't either i saw that and i was like well i didn't know that mm-hmm. that was on his driver's license yep, yep. so what's up with all this stuff that happened in the last couple of days. Oh my goodness. The the means like the comments on this whole on that whole thread were like really funny. Yeah. Cuz everybody's like, "Oh no, here we go again." <laughs> like he's just crazy. So he um ch- like he's saying all this stuff, prosecutor misconduct, criminal acts of witness tampering and intimidation, ethics violation. Um and I mean, I looked at a couple of things when you like bring up that, like it's a big deal in the attorney world. Oh, yeah. And just to kind of summarize what happened is back in October, uh, the prosecutor, Rob Wood, was approached by Zulema's lawyer who said that she wanted to meet. So Rob Wood went out to Chandler, Arizona, and the meeting took place at the Chandler Police Department. And there was an 18 minute long recording made of that meeting. And um, the Smith, what's his name? Garrett. Uh, Garrett, Garrett Smith. Garrett Smith, yep. Who is Zulema and we think Summer's attorney. Yep. Also was the attorney for Melanie Pulowski during her custody dispute. So they're all sharing this one dude. Yeah. Um, He's one of the guys that's with her when she does her interviews. Remember when they, her and um, Ian did those interviews? He's one of the guys that's sitting there that tells her when they asked, when Nate, Nate did those interviews. Yeah. Yeah. He's one of the guys um, there. Okay. uh, Doing that. So he made this recording and eventually hands it over to Mark Means and says that he wasn't comfortable essentially with, with what Rob Wood was talking about. Yeah. And he just told Mark Means that that Rob Wood was coaching the witnesses and witness tampering and all this stuff. Yeah. I, okay, it's my understanding if if I'm an attorney and I'm with my client and we're meeting with somebody, wouldn't you object? If you're sitting there, wouldn't you say, "Yeah. Oh, hold on." Like, I object to these questions or... And that's what Wood said in his response to all this, which is, hey, uh, you didn't say anything during the meeting itself that I was out of line. Yeah. Seems like a setup to me. Yeah, Um, that was... You know, that's the other thing we talked about. Like... Yeah. Why do you record that? Yeah. I mean, and and here's the thing. This is where it could get murky for, for the attorney is... I looked this up. And um, Mr. Smith, the guy who recorded it, says here, while recording a conversation with the consent of only one party is legal in Arizona, a lawyer's recording of a conversation without the consent of all parties may be unethical under the Arizona Rules of Professional Conduct. However, an attorney may advise his or her client to record a conversation without the consent of all parties as long as the recording is legal and the attorney does not participate in the recording. Yeah, it, it, it's it's all crazy. Because it's my understanding, too, that normally an attorney will all, also, there'll always be another witness in the room. Right. So the attorney never has to uh, testify. Yeah, but the thing is, is if we find out that the, and we think the attorney participated because at one point it says that it was being recorded without Zulema in the room. Yes. So... This could backfire on their attorney if he broke laws of recording 
this conversation and participated. Yeah. And I'm thinking, means, do you have a filter? Like, I mean, when somebody gives you, I mean, it's like, oh, this guy gave me this. Oh, yeah, we're running with this. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. We had the, we had essentially, in my opinion, you know, intimidating witnesses when he posted the, the rat gif on his Twitter and, and essentially says that Melanie Gibb and David Warwick weren't telling what they knew. And he was soliciting essentially evidence from anybody who had it. Yeah. Which was horrible. Yeah. And it, 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 it was, you know, to me, the, the rat thing that he put on there, it's, you know, it's a slight yeah. against the witnesses. You're you're calling them rats. Yeah. To the free world, anybody with a Twitter account can read that. Yeah. How? Meanwhile, your client is the one that's guilty. <laughs> but I just thought it was kind of pot calling the kettle black. Yeah. Where he's doing it on a Twitter, and then he's alleging the prosecutor does it in a room with people in it. Yeah, with investigators and everybody. Oh, I yeah. don't think those investigators. It was very informal. I'm not sure who all was there, but. Um, the prosecutor said this was not an investigative meeting. This was sort of an introductory, um, I guess, maybe getting familiar. But Zulema asked for it, which makes me think, was this all a setup? Yeah. Well, the one I saw, it said, like, he went in, introduced himself, and then he left the room and then spoke with investigators. That was the one I saw. So maybe I don't you know. saw a different. I don't know. But, yeah. Um, I mean, w- again, they contacted them. She wanted the meeting. Yeah. So to me, that screams, oh, there's other motives here too. I I don't see how the lawyer didn't tell Zulema or Summer, which is Lori's sister, that he was recording the meeting. Yeah. So they all had to have known. Yeah. Which to me, you're going to be on your best behavior (laughs) when you know you're being recorded. Um, It makes Summer and Zulema look good because they look like they followed every rule they need to follow or whatever. Didn't say anything too crazy because they knew it would be on tape. Yeah. So, but we did learn a few little nuggets. Uh, Well, before we get to that, if you remember when Pryor said that to Melanie Gibb on the stand, if Wood told her what to say. Yeah. It almost seems like they've sort of been setting this up since Chad's preliminary hearing. Yep. Because he flat out asked Melanie Gibb, did he tell you what to say? Did he coach you? Yeah. Did he tell you what to wear? Like all this stuff. Yeah. Why are you looking yeah. at him? Yeah. Um, but Rob Wood on the recording, which the court TV had a transcript or part of it at least. Yeah. He did say they're considering conspiracy to commit murder charges for Lori and Chad. Yeah. And what else? Um, you know, that it could be a death penalty case. Which I thought was big. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, but it, <sighs> like the thing we don't know, what questions did they ask him to get him to respond to that? You know what I mean? Oh, it's true. And I mean, at one point in Wood's filing, he says that it seems edited. Yep. Now, if they can prove that this was edited... This attorney is going to lose his license, probably. Yeah. Because you're putting this out into the world before you even file a motion that you want wood removed. Is that not how it went down? They, yeah. they, they talked about it and then filed the motion? Yeah. So you're, you're going to the court of public opinion. trying To, to me, it just seems like... They're, they're throwing stuff to the wall and seeing what sticks, but let's try to dirty up the prosecutor. And, like, that's going to change our opinions of Ch- Chad and Lori. Exactly. I mean. Like, I'm sorry. I think Rob was done a good job. They're scared of him. Yeah. I mean, I think he's, you know, done. He's, I, he's like a bulldog. That's what I think. Like, he's like, you know. He's so, got his stuff together. Yeah. When he is in that courtroom, he doesn't get tripped up. Yeah. We, with Pryor, I will say that he definitely is more assertive and seems to be more organized than Mark Means. I totally agree. Um, but Pryor has criminal defense attorney experience to where Means doesn't. Yeah. His webpage is still a bus. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's just, um, it's kind of like apples to oranges. Dude, do you mean he has a bus on his website? He has a bus. I mean, the last time I looked, it's like a big white charter bus. 
And I'm like, well, what's the what does that? that mean? Like, Is that what all the cult members get on and go to their little <laughs> what the world? I don't know. Um, so he did. They said he did throw out some religious references or whatever through conversation. Um, I mean, it doesn't sound like he asked her. Like, I mean, from and it was it was shady how he threw it out. So Means released those the um uh. <sighs> My brain is not working today. No, that's okay. Mine's on like um, half capacity. So. so he released the um, the minutes. The anyways, he released the the transcript. transcript. I could not think. There you go. I got okay, you. Okay. Yeah. Um, so he <laughs> released the transcript. You owe me one. I know, right? <laughs> it's usually right the opposite. Exactly. Um, so he released the transcript before the judge could rule and say, "Oh no." Don't talk about this anymore. Yeah, but the judge just... Uh, yeah, like right before we came on, right? Just ruled that he wants this stuff sealed. Yeah. As it should be. This should yeah. not be in the public right now. Yeah. I um, feel like this is like 10-year-olds in the neighborhood. Well, I think a lot of it is just... At this point, Means and Pryor have gotten enough discovery from the prosecution to know what they're up against in a sense. Yeah. Uh, they don't have to give discovery, I don't think, until they charge them with more stuff. But, I mean, Lord, they've tried to get everything, including the kitchen sink, yep. for stuff that don't even relate to the kids. Mm -hmm. um, but, so in the conversation, we know that he, uh, Rob Wood, insults Mark Means and calls him incompetent. And he also makes fun of Chad. Yeah. Both very easy things to do. Oh, yeah. Um. And then he talked about his own opinions about the case. And he said the cases are strong against Chad and Lori, but Lori's case is stronger. Yeah. But what does he say about Chad? Uh, that he thinks he's the mastermind. Yeah, which is kind of what we sort of have thought all along. Yeah. I would have thought the case against Chad would have been stronger. Because they're buried in a yard. Right. But yeah. you never know. Um, we just don't know what they have. Yeah. But again, you don't know... I, until we hear that whole thing or see the transcripts from the whole thing. Right. Um, I don't think you can say anything because, I mean, it's, it was, they could have asked him anything and he's responding. Right. You know, so if it is edited, like we do enough editing, like video and stuff, like it records what you do on there. I mean, let's say Summer says, okay, do you have a strong case against my sister? And Wood says, yeah, we do have a strong case. Yeah. How is that? I yeah. mean. I don't see anything wrong with that. No. Um, Would it have been okay if he said, oh, we don't have anything? Yeah. Like, or, I can't tell you that, but it, she's she's in jail on, you know, what, three, two, three million dollars bail? Yeah. I mean, do the math. But yeah. but if, here's the thing. I, I believe if Wood didn't know he was being recorded, in this case, it could be illegal. Exactly. So let's just see what, what happens. He didn't think it was the whole conversation. Yeah, he thinks he said it was edited because yeah. he said it because he I guess he remembered the whole thing and he said it all wasn't there. So right, but um, the lawyer um, is still saying that he was within his right to record this. I think he's wrong. I think so too. <laughs> so, um, yeah. but the prosecutor is trying to get an order to keep everybody from talking about this on social media, which we know that's Mark Means. Yeah. Like, well, well, yeah, I mean him. The the sure. the main is him because he gets on there and says just crazy stuff. I mean, I've never seen an attorney in like a pre-trial way uh, or a pre-trial time go on and do what Mark Means did. Yeah, he's a pot stirrer. I've never seen it. Yeah. Um so Shanley Painter on Court TV, she talked to a former prosecutor who said this is a really rare motion to file to remove the prosecutor. And um, if there's substance there, according to this prosecutor, it, it, this could be huge. This could be significant. In other words, if a judge determines that would overstep boundaries, yeah. uh, this could be a big deal. But the burden of proof is going to be super high. Yeah, and the thing is, like, you, if you're going to bring this charge, like, this is a big deal. So if you're going to bring this, then you better have the evidence to back it up. And, and you better not be submitting an edited conversation. Exactly. Because it's going to backfire. Yeah, 
in my opinion, this is all going to backfire on means. I think so. Yeah. I don't think any less of Rob Wood. No, I don't By hearing what, you know, I don't. Okay, so let's just say for the sake of maybe he let his guard down a little bit. I don't think he would with Zulema and Summer. Yeah. Um, they're really for the other side. Even if they're going to be prosecution witnesses, um, especially Summer, that's her sister. Yeah. So in spite of all the horrific stuff that's happened, I'm sure with her there is still a feeling of allegiance to her sister. Yeah. But let's just say that Wood sort of just let his guard down a little bit and said, yeah, you know, I mean, Chad's the mastermind. Mark Means is, is an idiot. Um, if I were Summer, I would tell my sister, maybe we need to try to find a better lawyer because the prosecutor's saying he's an idiot. Yeah. I, I don't know. But So here's the other thing. Could this conversation have happened with like detectives and they're sit like, you know, like we have, we don't know cause we haven't heard anything. Like could some of those comments been made when he was just around them? And I mean, I know the attorney could still been in the room. Is oh, that, I see you what, know what I mean? Saying. Yeah. Like, could it have been that Zulema and Summer were not in there and it was just that group of people? Can that conversation take place? I don't know. I'm not yeah. an attorney. I don't I don't know how those things happen, but Yeah. If you had like Smith in there with the detectives and Wood and they're just sitting around conversating, like could that have been, you know, I'm just uh, no, throwing that a, out there. It's a good point. Um yeah. the one thing that that um that Rob Wood he he empathized with the fact that that Lori is Summer's sister, but in the recording, apparently, he, he just obviously said the focus is on the kids oh. and justice for them. Now, there's supposed to be more filings to come, but we don't really know what. Yep. We just heard there's more filings to come, and they may release the audio soon, although if the judge is involved at this point, he may not allow that audio to be released. Yep. Um, I don't think it needs to be. Um, it just really takes the focus off what's important. Exactly. But this would be a really good time, I think, for Rob Wood to drop some charges just to kind of take the focus off of him. Yeah. And let's get some charges out there, and, and we're all ready for them. Yep. Um, so the prosecution, they they don't think the upcoming hearings would be affected by this but yeah the all the mudslinging right yeah. so we have found out some things about garrett smith the lawyer who made the recording yeah um he was reprimanded in what 2016 yeah he didn't monitor the status of his client's civil suit and he didn't communicate 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 <laughs> adequately with his qu cl oh dear <laughs> jesus in heaven yeah, I'm there's not some drunk. cues in there. There's I, some you know, cues. I haven't drank enough coffee today. Yeah. Um. So he didn't adequately. Talk, thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh. He returning the favor. He didn't talk with his client enough about the status of his civil suit, and it resulted in a default judgment. So, um, he, the other thing was again in 2017. He, that was a reprimand in 2016. The next year, he was suspended for 30 days and got two years probation by the state bar. He didn't communicate with his other client, which resulted in two bench warrants being issued for the defendant because he didn't tell his, his client that they, he had court dates. Yeah, I don't think I would be calling on this guy. Nah, it doesn't sound like he's got his stuff together. It's a little shady, sounds like. But he had to refund that client $6,500. Wow. So what has Wood said in response to, so, oh, to the... To these allegations yeah. of the recording and he did something wrong. I mean, he comes out and says at no time did he coerce or intimidate. Mm -hmm. um, the Like what we said a while ago, uh, the attorney didn't object at any time during the meeting. Um, Wood says the meeting was introductory in nature and not investigative. Yeah, which I kind of just wonder if Zulema wanted this meeting... Um, what did she want to talk about? Like, I want to meet you, come out to Arizona. Yeah. Oh, this is very strange to me. Yeah. Um, and it, I mean, I, maybe she wanted to meet to, okay, this is what I know. Maybe she was sharing what she knew or whatever. So I don't see how you can get, um, coercion and intimidation when 
he didn't set the meeting up. Right. And it um, doesn't sound like from what we've heard, he was saying, hey, if you don't testify to this, yeah. I'm going to put you in jail. Yeah. Um, he's just now, giving his opinion. What if she asked? I mean, what if she said, what if I don't want to testify? Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's yeah. so many ways this whole conversation could go. For sure. Um, and if you edit, like, we know you can edit a video. Oh, of Like, course. you can make it sound how you want it to sound. Definitely. So. Well, and the thing is, um, Mark Means also is filing a motion to extend time. Um, in other words, he wants to delay the motion to dismiss, dismiss the charges for her, which is going to be heard on the 6th yeah. of January. And he wants to take... Uh, the court to take Rob Wood off the case and call on him to appear as a witness. Yeah. So I don't think any of that's going to happen. I think no. worst case scenario, maybe some sanctions or like a reprimand, but I don't see anything in that. That's not really essentially sort of something you could conclude on your own. Yeah. I think it's going to fall back on me. I think so too. Wasting the court's time. Yeah. And, um, I mean, we don't know everything they have, but I mean, I, I, I just think that Means and Pryor, all they can do is file these kind of, you know, far reach motions. Yeah, it's like, okay, I am in trouble. I have nothing and I'm going to throw this um, and see if it sticks or, but. Well, we also heard that Melanie Gibb got married. Yeah, yeah. I think her and David got married. But last, this past Saturday. Yeah, I think it was like the 12th, wasn't it, or something? Yeah. Yeah. But they, um, I looked it up. They still don't get any kind of like spousal privilege in this case. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah. I, who knows? Um, so that was kind of all we had. Um, just hadn't been a lot going on, but I think we'll probably have a little bit more content and maybe after Christmas, let's see what happens in the next few days with these filings. And see what happens if if they get this in to be heard, they could have it heard in the next you know week. Dude, I want to be a fly when the judge says, "Quit it, <laughs> stop it." Yeah. Um, um, well, I think you know the big thing is it's Christmas. I've been thinking about Kay and Larry and Charles's boys and Annie and everybody. Um, yeah. And Colby and Cheryl and all those. There's yeah. there's so many people that, um, you know, last year it just wasn't known what happened. This is kind of like the first Christmas where they know the kids are dead. Yeah. Um, you know, this is the boys' second Christmas without Charles. And, and just it makes me grateful for what I have. Um, there's so much hurt in this family. And, and um, right now there's just not much going on to remedy at least that it, it, it's all a slow process. Yeah. So Kay's daughter has been releasing some videos. Yeah. I've seen, um, I think her name's Cresha. I think I, that's right. I'm not sure. I, I think that's right. I, I, I've, I wanted to tweet and Facebook those videos and I think I will. I've seen them on other groups. I'm always yeah. real hesitant to share. Like if Colby puts a picture up or something, I'm always so hesitant to share because I, I don't know. I just feel like that's his stuff. Yeah. And I don't, but I, I'll release them. If you haven't seen them, it's, it's really cute. What's on those videos? Yeah, so the first one she did was like JJ on, um, uh, I guess it was Kay and Larry's bus. Because uh, I think that's what they do, charter bus stuff. And um, so he was on the bus and he was on the microphone. It was so cute. I think one of his little cousins was there with him or something. Yeah. Um, and then Larry comes in and, and says some stuff. But it's just really cute. We've he was so funny. Oh, he was adorable. Yeah. And we've seen a clip of that, but this was like the full version. Yes. But what was so cute to me is when Larry starts singing, JJ gets so excited. Yeah. It's and he just, you see his whole body react. He's just yeah. super excited that Papa's on there singing. And it, and then the other one was him doing his ABCs. Yeah. But that was Charles on that video. That was Charles's voice, I believe. Yeah, I think so too. Um, super, super cute. And it, it, it's always nice to see videos of the kids because we, we see more still pictures than anything. Yeah. And to hear his little voice and, and to see his body language and stuff, it, it really drives home. Yeah. How, you know, as if we don't know how sad this is to see a living little boy on a video um, yep. and, and know his fate. It, yep. it just breaks your heart. But we're, we're thinking about all the families involved this holiday season. Um, yep. 
it's weird how we haven't met any of them, but you know, you sort of feel like you know them, and and you you hurt for them yeah. uh, for their losses. And but hey, maybe next year we're coming into twenty twenty one. Let's hope it's not the craziness that we've had in twenty twenty. Oh, I know. Right? <laughs> it's been such a crazy year. Ooh, yep. But I'm grateful because I'm ending the year with uh, a healthy family and and a good life. Yep. So. Got to keep that perspective in times like these. Exactly. But so maybe next year, you know, we hopefully we can go out to a hearing or two when COVID slows down and maybe things get a little bit back to normal. And um, they still haven't had the the public memorial with Kay and Larry that they wanted. I know COVID's thrown a wrench in everything, but mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, hopefully soon we'll start getting some more charges. We'll have much more to talk about. And um, but in the meantime, uh, Shout out to Mikhail. Hey, Mikhail. And to everybody on Twitter. I have fun tweeting everybody. I haven't really been super active lately, but... Um, I like... Because I, I read a lot of those messages or whatever comments people make, and um, it's cool to interact with people. It really is. You guys is. are cool. It's fun, yeah. It's, um, we we still got to get YouTube back up and running. Um, but our Twitter followers, they keep us straight. If we make a mistake, they tell us, and we're, we're super grateful um, yeah. for that. And uh, just the conversation over there is a good group of people. So just follow us on social media and join the conversation. And I think once the holidays are over, we'll at least pick up to at least one one a week. Yeah. Uh, one podcast a week. We're just going to start creating our own content. Yep. <laughs> and eventually, like we said before, we may pick up a new case or two. Yep. Um, and, and start doing some stuff. But in the meantime, we hope you guys have a Merry Christmas. And, and if I think we'll probably be back between Christmas and New Year because I think there's going to be some movement on this stuff in the next few weeks. Oh, most definitely. And if anything major happens, we'll hop on because you live five minutes from me and it's pretty easy to do. Yep. But all now right. I think all of our traveling's over for a while and so we're here to serve. Yep. Try to find some content and go from there. All right. All right. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Have a good evening. Yep.